with that, we are moving forward towards our fireside chat where we will talk about 2020, year that was. In this chat, we have with us Mr. Gaurav Gandhi, Director and Country General Manager, Amazon Prime Video India. And chairing this session is Mr. Naval Ahuja, Co-Founder and Director, Exchange for Media Group. A very warm welcome to you, gentlemen. Mr. Ahuja, I'd leave the screen to take forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Khyati, Gaurav. Uh, welcome to the session and thank you for joining us today. I hope uh, you and everybody at home is doing well. Uh, let me start uh, by, uh, you know, talking about what's happening around us before we get into the finer points of the OTT business with Gaurav here. You know, over the last uh, one week, I've been asked a few times, uh, why are we doing this event? You know, is it necessary to uh, curate something at a time like this? Why not postpone it? And we had a discussion, I had a discussion with all my colleagues. We also spoke with some of our partners. Uh, these are not easy choices to make, uh, but uh, we finally decided that curtailing whatever little economic activity that's happening around us, especially in the media advertising industry, is uh, going to be counterproductive. Uh, times are difficult. A lot of our own colleagues, their direct families, friends have been suffering, uh, me, my you know, father is unwell in Delhi. I've had lots of friends who have lost family members. At times like these, when there is so much gloom and doom around, uh, not uh, organizing events is uh, in some ways not going to, uh, you know, change anything, especially if we are not coming in the way of any essential services working, or we are not kind of adding, taking away bandwidth uh, from, you know, what the government or our COVID warriors are trying to do. And in line with that, with that thinking, what we've also done is today's evening ceremony, which is the Exchange for Media OTT Play Awards, has been to toned down significantly and we'll just do a metal announcement and there'll be no celebrations. So, as I said, uh, not an easy choice to make, but we decided with uh, going ahead with, uh, you know, whatever economic activity we indulge in. And, uh, you know, hopefully things will... Uh, start getting better as uh, the country sees the peak of COVID cases behind us. With that out of the way, uh, Gaurav, thank you for joining us. Uh, it is a very momentous year for uh, the OTT industry. But before I get into business, tell us how you're coping up. How are your colleagues at Amazon coping up with the pandemic? And you know, as a leader, uh, how do you keep strength and give strength to your colleagues every day? Thank you for having me, Naval. Um, it's a pleasure to be here talking to everyone. It, it is a difficult time for everyone. And, you know, you talked about it and it's no different for us. Um, you know, everybody here is impacted. I, I, you know, you can't find anybody around who's not impacted one way or the other. So at times like this, uh, people and their safety and the family safety comes first before anything else. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, sort of focus. A big focus is that, and the focus of the company also is on making sure we're pretty safe and and uh, healthy, and what we can do for ourselves and people around us. So that remains like the number one area of focus for everybody. And of course, given that we continue to do our you know job of trying to get entertainment to people, um, you know, um, in the safety and confines of their home uh, as much as possible. And and I think we've been you know. Uh, given the difficult times the industry has been overall, uh, everybody's come together to see what best we can do with that. And, and I'm glad that we played our part in that. Fantastic. Let me uh, dive into our uh, you know, session today, which is uh, about the rise of OTT and what the future holds for us. Before I ask you uh, a few questions, let me uh, you know, put some facts on the table uh, to create a sort of background and give perspective to uh, our colleagues from the industry who are watching. Bark's report, uh, recent report said India now has uh, some 210 million households with television sets, which roughly means that five people per household, roughly a billion people are watching uh, or have access to television content. Now that feat, as we all know, has been achieved in almost 30 years of private satellite television in India. Uh, television industry pay TV revenues are expected to touch almost $12 billion by 2025, which is not far, just four years away. Uh, on the other hand, OTT is estimated to have almost, uh, some reports say OTT is estimated to have almost 500 million subscribers by 2023, which is just around the corner, uh, just 18 months away. 
and also expected to have almost $5 billion revenue. The current OTT market size of uh, uh, around $1.5 billion uh, includes obviously both advertising and subscription revenues uh, with a larger share, almost two thirds coming from advertising and rest coming from uh, subscription. Uh, the point here is what TV managed in almost 30 years, OTT will end up covering half of that journey in just uh, uh, you know, one third, under one third of time period. Uh, if we assume that you know, the real growth of OTT in India started a decade back, roughly 10 years. Now that is obviously having a profound impact on consumers, consumer habit, content production, the entire ecosystem of uh, OTT business businesses in India. Let me start by asking you, uh, Gaurav, uh, you've seen both sides of the journey. You've been a television executive for many years before you launched Woot for Viacom and then jumped into Amazon. And you've also seen the insights of how television companies have worked. In your assessment, how's been the journey from being a TV executive to now uh, a OTT company, uh, company leader uh, from a view of one, the content piece that you uh, always looked at, and second, the business model of both of these companies, how they work. Yeah, um, thanks. It's a, it's, a, it's a big question and has many strands to it, so I'll try and answer that. I, I think uh, it's fair to say that um, the OTT sec segment or streaming segment in India has grown um, exponentially over the last you know, five or six years or seven years. And uh, before I get to TV and you know how TV is going, I can, there are some head, tailwinds that the category has seen, which has led to this growth. And I think some of them are going to continue. Um, so, so whether it was the fact that, uh, and Kanchan was talking about it in the, in the previous segment that I joined, she talked about the fact that OTT gets to uh, smaller town cities rural very easily on distribution. And I think that's a very critical difference between the two the fact that um, there was a physical distribution needed compared to your, you were running on a backbone of a telecom and right. wireless infra. Uh, so the, one of the biggest tailwinds obviously was with the growth of broadband and, uh, and affordable data as well as connectivity. And the other question you talked about uh, was 210 million homes. And interesting part of that is uh, about 5%, 95% of that homes remain single TV. Um, so That's right. here you have a ubiquitous, uh, you know, sort of uh, device, which becomes TV for everybody in the house. Uh, and therefore uh, you suddenly have hundreds of millions on back of that data available to access content. And then the third part of that is naturally uh, about content availability. And uh, another interesting part of that was the early parts of our of the growth of the journey came from uh, you know a lot of free content available easily, whether it was YouTube or broadcaster putting the content away, and they would, people get in the habit of it. And then came the premium content where customers could actually directly pay, and that segment grew with affordability growing. So in, in many ways, uh, the tailwind of this sector uh, has been unique, and that continues to grow. Uh, but I want to just go back to your question on broadcast a little bit before we come back to streaming and how that 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 will sort of see over the next few years. I think uh, the broadcast business in 30 years done a lot. So first of all, let's like it, 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 we think say 30 years, but you know that industry at 210 million has achieved a lot. Uh, it, that said, it has it, it has its commercial model the way it is. It is highly dependent on advertising. Uh, That's right. Yeah, it has challenges on the subscription revenue side it has had over the years. And because it's dependent so much on advertising, it sort of operates on the currency of ratings, which itself means that you have to sort of serve the center of plate, lowest common denominator first, and then build segments on top. And the largest sort of revenue will go to the one which serves the maximum size of the plate, right? So to say. Now that makes it that everybody is chasing just that singular kind of eyeball to be able to make a difference and make a revenue model. So in many ways, all broadcasters have the same revenue model. It's largely linked to advertising, somewhat linked to subscription, if at all, but nobody subscription skewed only. 
or could and not. By the way, many TV companies tried the slice, Correct. Uh, slicing and dicing model, but it never worked because never of work. high distribution costs. They could exactly. not make it work. Exactly. And therefore, if you were dependent on that, you had to then therefore, you know, change your model back to saying, how can I work within this confined and therefore it led to the kind of content and, and the kind of shows and the episodic, like, uh, the, the tenant of like kind of episodic formats and so on and, and nothing wrong with it. Like it's just that it, it is a function of the commercial model. Now, uh, and I'll give you an analogy to it when we come to streaming. Uh, so, so there was segmentation, so to say, it was not possible at all. Uh, novel, uh, That's in right. the sense. And we all know that even in advertising, uh, the more sharper you can get to segment to a customer set and so on, the more you can, you know, get to besides the size and scale of audience, you can get to uh, higher CPMs or higher rates. Now, when it came to streaming, you certainly could segment. You could say this is for X and this is for Y. Much like you would say in the multiplexes, I'm only, only going to make a movie for 100 seats uh, and one screen uh, compared to a thousand seat screen and single screen where I had to therefore make every movie combination of many genres while segmented cinema can come up because multiplexes were there now that's in right. many ways streaming can do that and that's the difference in the model uh the earlier versions of streaming said hey but there's no scale here it's only for um you know select metro audiences but you know interestingly we you know your question uh one question from the from somebody in the audience was about does it reach interiors of the country I can tell you prime video is watched in over 4,300 4, towns and cities in the country. Um, oh. you know, and we, and we are a service behind a paywall, right? So, so I, I think the, there is scale in streaming. There is the business model of segmentation in streaming. Um, and one should sort of not confuse streaming always with, um, uh, streaming only content. The fact is this, the, the, the pipes of broadband and the services on streaming can provide streaming originals. They provide TV content available, you know, to the customers, the same soaps and TV shows. They provide news. They also provide sports and they also provide movies today. They provide, you know, almost as much, if not larger reach for many films, um, you know, that theatrical business can provide. So I, I think that's the big difference. And I, and I see the over longer term, it's more and, and then not or. But streaming has a very big headroom to grow. And, and in a few years, you'll be as many customers actually streaming as watching TV. Absolutely. I'll come back to the, uh, you know, TV versus streaming debate a little later in our discussion. Let me uh, jump on to, you know, what's been happening around us over the last 12 months, especially with regards to the movie business. Unfortunately, cinema halls have yeah. had to shut down. And the uh, sort of impact of that has been content consumption, movie content consumption on OTT platforms has skyrocketed. And that's completely also uh, changed the dynamics of the uh, movie, uh, you know, business trade, so to say. I recall it was early 2000 when Z launched this Friday premiere shows and they started uh, acquiring uh, television movie content, uh, satellite movie content uh, uh, in bucketfuls and uh, suddenly uh, title pricing for movies went up, uh, skyrocketed, and then uh, Sony TV got into the game. They acquired the entire Yash Raj library. Gradually, Star got in. They tied up with many large producers. And today, OTT platforms are doing exactly what uh, you know uh, television did 15, 20 years back. One of the reports I was reading said that uh, subscription video uh, revenues on OTT last year surpassed cinema uh, hall ticket. Uh, revenues naturally because a lot of cinema halls were shut. Now, uh, the corollary of this uh, Gaurav is that uh, OTT platforms have obviously spent a lot of money on acquiring uh, movie content. It has also created a kind of uh, inequality in the sense that only big ticket titles get sold well and the other titles kind of, you know, find it difficult to uh, get buyers. A uh, lot of uh, OTT platforms have also curated their SWOT strategy around big ticket, you know, releases, for example, Z is going to uh, uh, release Radhe on uh, Z5 before it hits cinemas. Tell us, uh, as lay people in this under industry, how do the economics of movie content acquisition work? How do you ever sit down and do a PNL where you have to write 300 crores plus on the cost side and, you know, revenues are, you know, sort of, sort of kind of fuzzy, I would say, for lack of a better term. 
Before we get to uh, comment on the economics, I think it's important to understand the role streaming is playing. And, and it, it, I would say it's, uh, you know, simply put, you, you said it's similar to what broadcasters were doing, uh, you know, a few years back, but I, I would say slightly different in my view. I'll tell you why. Today, uh, you know, in a country which makes anywhere between 1,500 to 2,000 films and has, uh, you know, a, 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 all of us are film fans and, uh, you know, we only have 9,000 screens. Our per capita, per, per million screen rate is, is amongst the lowest in, in, in growing market. So it's eight per million or something like that compared to 100 plus for, for US and, you know, 5, 5x or on China. I think the problem with that is that the reach that our biggest films are getting today in theatrical uh, in, in the percentage audience would be like the biggest film will get 2% people to watch in theaters, right? That's right yeah. Most films will actually have, you know, in this earliest window between 0.1 to 0.5% of audience watching it. The thing what streaming is able to do is provide augment that reach significantly in the very early window and therefore generate value for both customers who may not choose to go to theater for every movie will may yes. necessarily go for events, event films and, so, and some films also generate value for the producers who are able to now actually make additional revenue in the earlier early window. And I think the third important piece is it is able to seed um, demand for which was earlier non-existent. Let me give you an example. Um, and, and I'll come to the reach points more in more detail. When we did direct to service film last year, when we actually, you know, when there was um, a lockdown and we worked with creators to get these movies on, we did movies in five languages. One of the interesting thing we observed, uh, Naval, was that our Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, Kannada cinema mo film movie, uh, movies actually got about 50% of its audience outside their home state. What that really meant was that there was now a custom ba customer base ready to watch these films in their local language with subtitles or whatever else uh, options were available on localization and get that reach. Um, if you look at a difference now with that versus what was happening earlier in a theatrical world, I will get limited distribution of these films outside the home state because obviously demand is a physical theater dedicated to that. Yes. Even in TV world, the reality was those packs would be the, the local language packs or regional language packs will be sold to customers who want that language. So you will buy the Tamil language on a DTH or on cable, and you'll only get the movies there. Here, suddenly, customers who are able to actually, who otherwise watch Hindi or Bengali or Marathi, are able to watch Malayalam language films. A, a great example is, say, I mean, uh, last year I had a lot of these. So Rai Potru was a great example. Drishyam recently is a great example. Uh, you know, so, so I, I think that's a very big thing for creators, for customers, which is unique. Similarly, outside the country, again, a question which was coming, uh, I think I, again, cost, co got the back a half of Kanchan slides. It talked about exporting content. Um, these movies yeah. uh, internationally would get released only in about 15, 20 countries at best. Uh, and well, you, you and I have been in this industry for 20 years and we've seen that number has grown from 10 to 20. It's not grown from 10 to 250, right? And the reality yes. is today streaming is able to get those films to available in 200 plus countries, but actually watched in 170, 180 countries in the initial, initial period itself. So I, I think there is a, there's a large role that for reach and distribution, uh, besides the economics that you, one is able to play and, and change in the game. I'll give you a reverse example. You know, we're getting parasite last year, uh, you know, for example, in India, a Korean language film watch watched you know, dubbed in Hindi by so many customers locally. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I think a bunch of these things show you the part. Now come to economics of it. Your question. I think the economics, it's a very simple thing. There has to be somebody for whom it makes sense to sell the film at a price and somebody who makes sense to buy the film at the price. And everybody has a different model. Some people have a model, which is, Hey, let me put this on, you know, first on pay, then on free. Somebody has a model that, you know, I have a, you know, a telecom business, which will link to that. Somebody has different models. So I think you can, you can debate about the model. I think what's going to happen going forward is 
we've been seeing for the last four years, we're working with partners to get these films between four to eight weeks of theatrical. Uh, yes. In any case, it made sense suddenly uh, because theaters were shut to you know make it direct to service. Now, what that does is suddenly the, the reach that people have got with these movies being watched in 4,000 cities and, 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 and towns in the country, suddenly creators are able to say that, hey, I can actually get my audience far wider than even a theatrical release could get in the beginning. And I'm not here to say that streaming will replace theatrical business. I'm just saying that in many ways, what it will do is it is uh, uh, augmenting that reach. And some films will go direct to streaming. Some bills will come early window. Some films will go later window and so on. So it just creates an alternate uh, vehicle for creators and for customers. Yeah, I think very interesting. In fact, you mentioned Drishyam. I think Drishyam is a fit case where a movie available OTT can go in the same language on TV, right? Yeah. Of course, the Hindi one will be out. It will take maybe two or three years. But having seen the movie, I think it's a brilliant case for a, a Hindi TV channel to pick it up and just run it as it is on a Hindi TV channel. You'll still have some takers. Yeah. I don't know how the economic pricing will work, but uh, fantastic content. I think we've seen, this with, we've seen this with Surana Potra. We've seen this mass. So we've seen so many films that, uh, you know, uh, are getting national reach, uh, um, you know, and able to get customers across the country to watch it and enjoy it. And, and that's really the, the, the interesting part of how this dynamics is changing. Yes. Let me come to the content piece, uh, you know, uh, the non-movie, non-cricket content piece, Gaurav. And uh, a lot of uh, various uh, kinds of models have been tried globally and in India from the days of uh, platforms like Hulu uh, to Amazon and Netflix, uh, Disney Plus to the Indian uh, OTTs, the likes of Woot and MX players of the world. Uh, naturally, uh, content is the significant part apart from technology that OTT players need to invest in. Uh, I last read some 700 million odd dollars annually is being spent by OTT players, Indian companies in uh, content, both acquisition as well as fresh content. And we've seen many uh, over the last five, six years, if we see the growth of OTT, lots of uh, various models have been tried when it comes to investment in fresh content in India, right? And large number of OTT players are also owned by TV companies who have a certain kind of appetite and scale. If you were to do crystal ball gazing and tell us, you know, how that content play piece will play out. And I asked that from that question from sort of with two legs. One is, uh, I think uh, a large number of TV companies are now settled down to a kind of a basic level of fresh content they're doing. There was a time two, three years back when you had new show launches happening every week, two, three new show launches. Most of them are now doing a, you know, basic level uh, show curation and, uh, rest of the library is mostly TV content uh, sort of driven. And second part is the mix of S ward versus A ward in their library, right? Or in their strategy. Uh, like you mentioned, TV for many years was dependent upon advertising revenue. Even today, you see a large number of OTT players in India, especially if you leave out the Amazon, Netflix of the world, are still dependent a lot on that, on advertising. So given uh, that and how that is likely to continue to happen, what is the impact it is likely to ha uh, uh, have on fresh content curation by Indian OTT players? Yeah, I, I think that the very interesting part for us is that in our television world, we never had a premium pay channel, right? So if you look at the US, you had HBO or, you know, you had Showtime for many, many years and you were, and, and, and US was used to uh, seeing premium television on TV, yeah. truly, right? In our case, we were never used to that. And, and over the last three, four years with, uh, with a few streaming services like ours and a few others, uh, you know, trying to build out high quality cinematic value originals, which are, uh, which are of global standard, really, uh, you know, that uh, a customer that got used to that. And now I'm not saying that's the only thing customers watch. We customers watch all kinds. Of, and that's the beauty of this, of this space. So you can have the, you don't necessarily have to have a super expensive, uh, high cost, big star series always to make it work. You can have yes. a really authentic um, story and that will work as well. And I think uh, we, what we have seen as an example is that in all of this, like it has to be distinct, authentic and stories of an intentional soil, 
which really which really work. And I think the more genuine you are, and you know, and you work with key creators who are passionate about the projects, you know, and not always chase star power. You know, choose the right characters. Uh, you know, and we have many examples of of you know, Jadhi Bala Alawat is Hathi Ram, or say Manoj Bajpayee, who's a big star, yeah. anyways, and Shrikant, or Ali Fazal as Gundu Bhaiya, or like or Pankaj Tripathi as Kalyan Bhaiya. Like so many of these, like some of them are yeah. stars, like Manoj, and some of them were, were great actors, and now are, are even bigger stars, right? So, so I think what happens with this is that uh, if you do, we have learned with and we early, very early days. You're learning this, this, and creators are learning alongside, and we are all learning the art of the storytelling in a very different format. And uh, and many of these are creators who made fantastic cinema, uh, but they made cinema for uh, two and a half hours. These are ten episodes, multiple seasons. So the 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 industry is fundamentally learning a new art form, right? And the interesting part of this is you can make a show for Prime Video, or for Netflix, or Hotstar, or Wood for anybody else. And the learning yeah. you get as a creator can be used for next shows for everybody else, right? So, in many ways, it's the ecosystem that's developing uh, for everybody around us, not just for a particular streamer. And that ecosystem of development, uh, novel of of this learning, uh, is going to help everybody in the content creation business. Um, second part about uh, you talked about crystal ball gazing. I think on, the thing is the customer taste preferences define define everything. As customers get used to watching stories like this, authentic stories, whether they can be, you know, Mirzapur, they can be Patal Lok or Panchayat, uh, they are or Family Man. They are used to watching these stories. They want more of this, a and therefore, I think as more and more customers and deeper and deeper in the in the country watch these, their expectations change from everything streaming is giving them. So the the next show from anyone is compared to the last show they watched. That's and right. For, and for global services like ours, which have global shows, which are available here as well. And when somebody watches, you know, uh, Jack Ryan or the boys here, and the customer also watches the family man, Mirzapur, you have to keep that standard. And, but you have to be rooted in your storytelling. And the interesting, the third, and, and the third thing I would say is that uh, after the ecosystem development and the changing preferences of customers is the fact that Indian stories are beginning to travel around the world. One in five customers on general of our originals today are outside of the country. Yes. Um, so if you look in long term, what I think will happen is the creative ecosystem will more and more people will learn the art of creating these high yeah. quality shows and it'll become the new standard. Uh, you will have customers expecting that across the board and you will, we will see changes coming in in many forms, uh, including on television. The business model permitting, uh, and finally, I think the Indian stories will actually go around the world in a much much bigger way. Um, you know, again, Kanchan slide mentioned about some of them, uh, you know, being nominated for awards and winning awards around the world. I think the customer appreciation of of many more series goes even wider, and I think that we're just getting started there now. Um, so this is really like it's the best time to be a creator uh, and a best time for being a customer because so much amazing content is coming from India. Absolutely. In in fact, you know, uh, Bollywood took India to the globe, and now OTTs are spreading the next wave. Thank you, Gaurav, for such a candid and insightful conversation. I see the speakers from the next session are already on board. Before yeah. we go, uh, one last question, very important question to all our for all our viewers. You announced Mirzapur three will be out in twenty twenty two. Is it on track? <laughs> uh, I, I I I'm not going to steal the thunder. Uh, by announcing it here, uh, or you know, what the dates are, but I, what I, or or uh, the and but I think the, the interesting part for us is that we have so much amazing content, including uh, you know our next show, Last Star, coming this weekend. So so customers should stay tuned for that, and we have many more coming soon. So fantastic, fantastic. With that, thank you, Gaurav. Thank you for joining us. God bless you, and hope you and your family are staying safe. And in uh, these difficult times for the uh, country as well as for the world, services like Amazon are a very, you know, a breath of fresh air. You can tune in every evening. We are, I mean, we are doing it regularly. I'm sure a lot of you are already doing it. So look forward to more interesting, engaging content. Back to you, Kyati. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Gandhi and Mr. Hoja.